excellent job. The Gary home, you know, you remember that. I, we are ordination buddy, same class, and we are studying ministry together. We were in the Congregational Development School together also, and it is amazing that in this time together, mm, you're great. In his church right now, the bowling rally they bought, and they changed it into a church from the bowling rally, right? Sugar Grove, and it is a whole area. It's, it's, it's amazing place. So we need to continue that this dream this annual conference is really that pregnancy for everyone. Pregnancy. Can you say that? You are having a baby in your heart. Oh, man and woman, all together. Can you do that? Yes, I am proud to be pregnant mama. So let's dream together for that future. And we will making it. I know that when I did it, 50 new church while I was in Chicago eight years, I know in Wisconsin can double up. So we can project it hundred of them. Can you give a hands to the Wisconsin? Hundred new church start together. Yes, yes, we can do that. We will go. Gary, let's do that, okay? Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Many hands and many prayer and many dreams that we are cultivating. We're going to move on to the uh, John. Um, would you? Yes. Oh, Global Ministry. Yes, please come. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Paul Armstrong, chair of the Board of Global Ministries of the Wisconsin Annual Conference. And I'm going to take a moment before our resolution is presented to celebrate missions. We're all involved in missions. We're doing some incredible work here in Wisconsin. It is, uh, there's a measure of blessing that that we are able to share with others in this world. Hallelujah. I'd like to take a moment to celebrate those that are, are, are helping lead our conference. Would the Board of Global Ministry members please stand? If you're on the Board of Global Ministries, would you please stand? All right, we have a few here. If you are on one of the related subcommittees uh, and, uh, or serving on the board of a related agency, including Northcott, uh, the United Methodist Children's Service and so forth, would you please stand? Yeah. Yes, I am too. Yeah. Yes, you're up too, Bishop, yes. If you are on a local church mission committee or task group, of, please stand. Yeah. I'm trying to get you up, folks. Yeah. <laughs> we need to stretch a little bit. If you've ever given something to missions, please stand. There we go. <laughs> My friends, we're all blessed to be a blessing. Praise the Lord for the blessings that we have received and the blessings that we can extend to those around us. Yes, praise, praise the Lord. Stretch praise your arms. Lord. We need to praise exercise God. a little praise, bit, right? Yes. There we go. Praise, Lord. praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you. The work of the Board of Global Ministries is immense. We have groups such as Mission Motivation, the Hunger Task Force, the Community Ministries Committee, the Immigration Task Force, the Volunteers in Mission Programs, both national and international, the disaster response uh, uh, work of our conference. There's partnerships with Native America, ending with East Angola and moving into the uh, uh, in, into Mission Together program. There's our health and welfare institu uh, institutions and committees. There is, our work is immense. There's more that we do. We need people who are mission-minded to serve on our agencies, to serve on our committees. I encourage you to fill out that nominations form and indicate if you have a desire or passion uh, regarding missions. Please do that. Get that turned in. Come see me or Gail Burgess's or, or Tony Fuller. Uh, any of your mission uh, GBM representatives will be glad to talk with you regarding how you can serve. At this point, I turn it over to John Lawson, the chair of our Health and Welfare uh, Committee. Mm -hmm. Bishop, I'm told that I missed a question you asked me yesterday, and uh -huh. the answer is, yes, we can show the health and welfare video later, and oh. this would be the later. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Let's watch that.
the Wisconsin Conference has a wide variety of health and welfare ministries serving persons of all faiths and races as an outreach of the United Methodist Church. Each one is a key expression of our goal of social transformation within the conference and offers all an opportunity to serve others. Today, we are highlighting four of these significant ministries. Christian Community Homes and Services in Hudson and Osceola, Wisconsin is a nonprofit, faith-based organization offering senior living communities devoted to serving individuals in ways that reflect the importance of each unique life. This ministry is dedicated to showing the residents that they are truly special and deserving of utmost attention and assistance. Their continuum of care includes senior apartments, assisted living, memory care, skilled nursing, and rehabilitation and fitness. Christian Community Homes and Services takes pride in creating a place of comfort for those who have cared for us over the years. The Heritage of Morrow Home Community in Sparta, Wisconsin was founded on Christian love, which is apparent in the way the staff cares for those they serve. Their long-term care services include senior apartments, assisted living, and memory care. In addition, Morrow offers rehabilitation services, recreation therapy, and pastoral care. Meals in Motion serves delicious home-delivered meals to seniors. Mary Morrow's Attic is a volunteer-run thrift store in Sparta. Morrow also provides daycare at Young at Heart Child Care Center. This not-for-profit ministry strives to enhance the quality of life by preserving the dignity, independence, and uniqueness of each individual while meeting their physical, social, and spiritual needs. Schmidt Woodland Hills Retirement Community in Richland Center and its partners offer a wide range of quality services and facilities through good stewardship and a Christian philosophy. This not-for-profit ministry is home to an active group of seniors who share the benefits of a welcoming, secure, and comfortable lifestyle. Services include skilled nursing care, assisted living, independent apartments, personal supportive home services, rehab and therapy, and non-emergency medical transportation, as well as a pastoral care and a chapel. They also partner with a 19-unit HUD low-income apartment facility, a children's day school, and County Humane Society. Schmidt Woodland Hills provides an environment that promotes healthy minds and bodies, including physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Hillcrest Family Services in Dubuque, Iowa, is a faith-connected, nonprofit provider of health and education services for children, families, and adults in need. Working collaboratively with local communities, Hillcrest is able to offer a range of quality and innovative services, including adoption, pregnancy care and counseling, homeless outreach and shelters, a professional health clinic, mental health services and housing, an academy, spiritual and health integration services, tobacco use prevention, youth programs, and more. Hillcrest has also received EGLE accreditation from the accreditation arm of the United Methodist Association's Health and Welfare Ministries across the United States. The Wisconsin Health and Welfare Ministries provide invaluable services to their communities. In turn, they need your support. Remember to observe Golden Cross Sunday annually and to donate to a specific ministry Visit www.wisconsinumc.org for details. Let's give our hands to the ministry. We're proud of it. We do thank you for all the support, both financial, spiritual, prayer, volunteers, and otherwise. All of our ministries face significant legal, regulatory, financial challenges these days, and we do urge you to find ways to be supportive as we face those challenges. Dan Goodyear from uh, Christian Community Homes was not able to be with us this morning, uh, but we do have Jim Olson from Schmidt Woodland Hills. So Jim, would you like to share with us a bit? Let us welcome Jim. Good morning. I'm Jim Olson, and I serve you, our staff, 
residents and family as the administrator of Schmidt Woodland Hills in Richland Center. Many of you might not know that Schmidt Woodland Hills was born of the Methodist Church. Over 50 years ago, William and Ona Schmidt were active church members and personal friends with Bishop Northcott. Through this relationship, the Schmidt family uh, gave several major gifts, including the United Methodist Church. Uh, one significant gift was to the Western Wisconsin Conference of the Methodist Church to address a need identified in Richland Center, a retirement home. The significance of, of this effort was that Methodists stepped up and used their personal resources to solve local needs that were not being solved through other means. Our name could have been the Northcott Home, and I sometimes joke to myself that maybe we would have been the beginning of the Northcott chain of health and welfare ministries. But the first board adopted the name the Schmidt Methodist Home, the Schmidt Methodist Home. Continuing the tradition of our health, or of our, our birth, the board has continued to address community needs. Some of those were identified in the video and began with converting the apartment infirmary to a skilled nursing area. We've added rehabilitation, assisted living, home services, uh, were all added to the apartments. The continuum of care helps us right serve our elderly. Someplace in there, the board changed the name to Schmidt Woodland Hills Retirement Community, but worked hard to maintain our Methodist tradition. Schmidt Woodland Hills has continued to address community needs through partnership that were mentioned in the video. Our uh, daycare helps us with our intergenerational program. Our campus includes the Adoption Center for the Okuch Humane Society, which provides our pet therapy program. And as mentioned, we manage a 19-unit HUD low-income housing project. We've even hosted the district offices and their staff. These are examples of how the board, over the years, has identified needs and have contributed to make a, uh, a difference the Methodist difference in our community. How do we make all this work? It's through outstanding staff and their commitment. We ask, orient, and in-service our staff that their works must be an expression of their personal faith, whatever it might be. In addition to regular services, meditative moments, chaplaincy program, etc., all meetings meals and celebrations are begun with prayer. When we have a new United Methodist pastor come to Richland Center, and when they may be approached by someone who is church shopping, I invite them to bring them to Schmidt Woodland Hills to demonstrate how the United Methodist Church makes a difference in people's lives. As we open our new expanded skilled nursing facility, and celebrate our 50th anniversary. We are truly part of the life of the church. Your health and welfare ministries are your church in action, making a difference in the pew, your congregations. Thank you for considering Schmidt Woodland Hills Covenant Agreement, and I ask for your uh, affirm affirmation and support. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop, we have two action items to place before the conference at this time. First, action item 16, the covenant affiliation between Schmidt Woodland Hills and the Wisconsin Conference. All right, action item number 16 is in front of you. Uh, floor is open. Are you ready to vote? Okay, those in favor to adopt this motion, raise your hand. Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. None, and motion is carried. In. Thank you. And now we move on to action item 17, the covenant between Christian Community Homes and Services and the Wisconsin Conference. All right, item number 17 with the... Um, 
Yes, you can find it. Page 13? Page 13, yes. Yes, yes. All right. The motion is in front of you. Any discussion? All right. Those in favor to adopt this motion, would you raise your hand? Lower hand? Those opposed? Okay, motion is carried, John. Thank you. Excellent. And I just take the opportunity to remind you of the reception honoring Perry Hike following the conclusion of the afternoon session today and urge you to come and thank Perry for his good work. Thank you. And uh, John, I think I need to ask you to come to the podium a little bit. And thank you for your work as uh, our chair for the Health and Welfare Ministry in our conference. I know there's uh, so many ways they are uh, working uh, on behalf of this church in many venues they are bringing it into. And I'm very thank you that John is here. Of course, I have a personal, very great kinship with him because uh, Bishop David Lawson was the one who ordained me. <laughs> And then, of course, whenever we met and I say, how's Martha, how's uh, your mother doing? I know people are curious about that. Yes. She is living in an assisted living community in Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, near where my sister Karen lives. Mm -hmm. um, she is having a difficult time. Mm -hmm. uh, her mm -hmm. memory impairment is increasing. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is causing her some difficulty in her daily life, um, but she is surrounded by family and, and good people, and I appreciate your question and your concern. Our community will continue to pray for Mama. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your leadership. <laughs> Let's move on to the circuit Ministry 2.0. Welcome, Don. Thank you, Bishop. And uh, this is actually the first conference that I've been at with you where we've actually finished uh -huh. all those church visits. You're right. You drove how many miles? I don't know. I didn't count them. Mm. <laughs> but approximately? Oh, goodness. Um, well over ten or 12,000. Mm, 12,000 miles. You think about it. Yeah, if you we add went. it up and think about the way that works, it's huge. Mm. I understand you wanted to do some more of this, though. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. <laughs> Maybe later. I need to see my paper. <laughs> it is my pleasure uh, to report at this point about our progress in the development of circuit ministry in this new way. And I want to start off just by stating that it's been my pleasure and joy in this past year to actually start working with laity circuit teams. That's the part I've enjoyed the most, is being able to sit down at table with new teams of laity from some of our congregations and some of our circuits and to start the meeting with the question and get clarity as we move along and have the interest come and have this sense of, yes, we can help make a difference and change through local regional strategy. A couple of structural things I want to visit about as we get started, and I'm trying to use this thing, and I don't know where to point it. You point anywhere. Anywhere you want. And maybe it's... That didn't work either. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things that... I have tried to do, as I've worked with several in this process, is to eliminate unnecessary complexity. And so we have tried to realign our circuit ministry to the five district structure. And part of what that means is we have eliminated all cases in which circuits cross district lines. So consequently, we think it's going to be easier and simpler going forward with these adjustments. But the adjustments are not just to the five district structure. The adjustments are also based on things we've learned, things about what it means to work within counties, urban neighborhoods, school districts, church and charge yokings that have been in transition, travel routes, geographic affinities. These are things you do not get by looking at a map. 
These are things you learn by talking to the people who are trying to do them. We've been in consultation with all of the circuit leaders who have been in consultation with their circuits as well as district superintendents as we have worked for the realignment of circuits around several of these adjustments that matter on the basis of local reality and local geopolitical truths. Also, circuits are being resized for the laity circuit teams. In other words, they need to be sized in such a way that people can travel to meetings and they need to be sized in such a way that there can be small group dynamics for creativity. If you can get everyone around one table and have time and room for everyone to talk, new things can happen. So there will be probably more circuits. In fact, there will be more circuits. Instead of the 55, we're up to over 70 as we start the new process, but they will be smaller and they will be organized and are organized for a much more localized regional strategy. We're also needing to change the way we count them, or at least the way we understand them in the conference database. How many of you are in love with your number? <laughs> Some of you are. I know you are. <laughs> We have learned that we are all out of order in the original numbering strategy, and so we have determined to take a district-based consecutive count as a way of understanding circuits. And so the circuits will be renumbered, and there will be a count start in each district. So there will be like Southeast District Circuit 11, or Southwest District 5, or Northeast District Circuit 2, North Central 7, Northwest 10. Uh, they will be numbered that way, which will help us make adjustments without throwing everyone off as we go forward. It seemed to be a more rational way to do it at this point in the process. There it is. One of the consequences of resizing circuits for laity circuit involvement is that sometimes you make the circuit the right size for lay involvement, but it divides clergy who have been meeting together in a larger geographic circuit. When this occurs, we wanted to be sure that we understood some of our operating policies in transition. When a functioning larger clergy circuit is split to downsize it for a workable size for laity involvement, we want to encourage the clergy circuits to take the freedom they have to link with each other and continue working in the larger area if that services their needs, if that helps support them, if that helps them think regionally and strategy. The, um, the need to make it the right size for lay involvement is the priority we took in the way we sized these, but we wanted to be sure that there was the option for grace and the option for the choice to connect if clergy circuits would like to continue working in the larger group. They are not only free to do so, but they are encouraged to do so, and we hope they do. This will be different wherever you are in the annual conference. The other policy that is sort of a choice for connection and a grace policy has to do with what happens when these new district lines cut through an existing circuit. Remember I said earlier that circuits will no longer be in multiple districts. They'll just be in one. And that means that some churches will find themselves in a new circuit because they are in a new district. And in a few cases, not very many, but a few cases, we have churches that may have been involved in ongoing programmatic or networking activities with other congregations that were driven by their circuits. We wanted to be clear, you don't have to cut off from your friends to engage with the new circuit. In fact, it's probably good to connect with and continue to maintain those things that work. Local churches can connect with and partner with whoever they want to. It doesn't mean they don't need to connect in the new circuit, but the focus for the training and the work of it is different, so we see no conflict here. Finally, I want to throw up a slide here that shows three circles. I'm not going to go into great detail on this because this is something we talk about at length in the laity training. 
basically we're talking about three different types of leadership and differentiating these between the laity clergy team, the circuit clergy team, and the, uh, the local congregations. Visioning, futuring, and managing as a cooperative process that continues and hopefully will increase the level of connection between the lay circuit team, the clergy circuit team, and the congregations so that the new ministries and the new services and the new things that come from circuit ministry are embedded and connected with local churches. That's what we want to see happen. We understand that this is about a training focus for discipleship systems to help us learn our way forward into that. This is about a training focus to discover new ministry for, through community study and community engagement. Imagining Wisconsin anew in such a way that we help congregations reach new people with new ministry and build congregational vitality. You might say that in this way, circuit ministry is focusing on revitalization. Finally, there's a training schedule. For this summer, for the clergy, we will be going by district to try to help the clergy get a hold of what this new structure and new process will be for them now. And then, again, affirming that for the laity circuit teams, they are trained as ready and we go to them. All the training occurs on the local level. Thank you, Bishop, for the time. I hope that we will be able to show good results from this work in the days and years to come. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you. In the little chilly day, I think we were just finishing two-year junior local church visit. Dorchester, Wisconsin was the last stop. And about probably it was a little snow on the ground and it was a little chill day and I was exhausted and I say, we are done. <laughs> and of course he drove and when he drove and you know, he say, oh, I need to put the gas, Bishop, before goes, okay, you do that. So we stop in the outside of Dorchester, there's a near highway. He stopped and he put the gas and then he put the car beside of the, you know, the parking in the gas station and say, oh, Bishop, it was a special time. I brought the champagne. <laughs> it's a little bottle of champagne <laughs> from the <laughs> Spain he, he been journeyed in and he take it off and then you and I, what did it? What did I do? What we did toasted. We, we toasted. We it. toasted it. I had like this much because I had to drive. Yes, yes. And he slept all the way home. Beautiful people, parking lot, <laughs> in the gas station parking lot. <laughs> All right, so Delacio, uh, she's here as district superintendent, and we have a special research we're going to do. There is a petition in your packets that you received when you came in. It's on a blue piece of paper for those of you who can tell colors. Uh, it says additional resolutions and recommendations on the top. Go ahead. It is always um, a blessing to serve in churches, and it's difficult to watch some places where the church building is no longer located in a place that can be a viable ministry, and that is what has happened in this congregation. This is a resolution for the discontinuation of First United Methodist Church in Marion, Wisconsin. Paul Knowlton has been serving as the pastor in that congregation as they have um, had different kinds of challenges and different kinds of opportunities to serve. One of the things this congregation has, obviously, is a building, and they also have had an endowment 
They have discussed long and hard the last seven, the last four people who are worshiping in that congregation about what to do. And so they are, uh, they have decided that rather than use up their endowment to continue to pay to stay open and to keep the pastor there, that they would become a legacy congregation. They would become a people who would pass on the endowment to a variety of mission opportunities based on our rules. And they would close the congregation. People would join different United Methodist churches or other churches in the area and allow the building to be used for mission and ministry as possible. I invite you to keep this congregation in your prayers on June, the last Saturday of June, the 27th or 28th, they will be having a closing worship service. I saw an orange flag somewhere. No, that? just go ahead. Go just go ahead? Yes, okay. Uh, so we are resolving that the Wisconsin Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church meeting June 12th through 14th at Middleton, Wisconsin, declares the first United Methodist Church discontinued as of July 1st, 2015, and directs the Nicolay District Superintendent to be the officer of the conference to implement this action. Be it further resolved that the net proceeds of the sale of the church property and all remaining assets be distributed according to the conference policy. Okay, the motion is in front of you. This is a kind of time for, uh, you know, some way mixed feeling, but we always, I think a time to be born, time to be, you know, and so we are working hard on the journey. I hope even moratorium that I really want to build up in the future, not, not anymore discontinuing, but well, that's spirit. So the motion is in front of you. Any discussion? And I want us to celebrate the legacy of 150 years and all the hundreds and thousands of peoples whose lives have been touched because of this congregation. Okay, and also this church has a history. The UMC and Brethren Church merge happened in 1968, but this church was the first one year ahead to merge it as a United Methodist Church. So that's a very distinctive history. A former, I was superintendent in that place. I remember that all, and it's a time to celebrate about. So that would you pray before action? Would Let you pray? pray. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. God of grace and new life, we give you thanks for this congregation in Marion, Wisconsin for the blessings that you have given to the community and to all the people whose lives have been touched through the people of this congregation. As they close this particular ministry, we give you thanks for the way they have created a legacy for the future, for new ministries, new possibilities, new ways of serving and mission and care of people in the neighborhood and the surrounding community and throughout the world for these gifts and for the ways that you continue to plant new seeds of growth as we imagine our way forward in new forms of mission and ministry. We give you thanks for your spirit, for your joy, for your grace, for your hope and love. In the name of the one who taught us how to live, Jesus our Christ, amen. Amen. All right, those in favor to the motion to adopt, would you raise your hand? Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand, motion is carried. Thank you, Superintendent. Microphone three. Thank you. Um, Laverne Larson, lay member at the Marcus Ann United Methodist Church, and I would like to take a moment of personal privilege to announce a birth. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, please do that. Um, Many of you know I've been involved in the equipping conference for effective Christian leaders in Uganda, mm -hmm. Advanced Special Number 7945. Okay. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Number again? 7945. Okay, 7945. Thank you. We have been equipping pastors and other Christian leaders for over 12 years now. 
uh, in the Mbali region of Uganda, an area that did not have a United Methodist presence. Um, the equipping conference was for uh, equipping pastors of all denominations. So welcoming, especially uh, focusing on the poorest of the poor. There's been several births over the years, one of which is the facility in which we met is now a village. It has grown, uh, and that is the Green Pastures Secondary and Vocational School. <clears throat> And uh, two years ago, another congregation, Eureka United Methodist Church, uh, was privileged to come in and put three wells mm -hmm. in a new ministry area started by some of these ministers. And uh, now we have two school buildings going up. But on June 3rd, I had the excitement of being part of witnessing the birth of a seminary. Okay. So our equipping conference for effective Christian leaders has now given birth to a seminary, and we look forward to many trained leaders in the future. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you for the mission celebration for that. See, we are all pregnant. Mm. In God's design, I think that's it. All right, we are ready to move on to vote for the petition at this moment. The secretary will guide us, and then we will move on to the voting. Before we get into how to vote, I do have a couple of logistical things that I need to mention. First of all, remember that you need to be seated at your tables in order to participate in this ballot. We know that some tables have disappeared since yesterday over here on our left. If you are without a table and have a white, green, or yellow tag, if you could move into a table that has space, or if there's none available, we will give you ballots in those chairs if you are seated in that first row. So those who are outside of the bell, you know, that uh, the bar. bar, you're coming in into voting for this matter. Move now. Over there, please, you come to the, your table. There are some vacant chairs, so just fill them in, please. That way we can also guarantee you a pencil, <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> Another request from the teller team is that you please remove anything that might be laying in the aisles between the tables. They have to make their way up and down these aisles to distribute and collect ballots. So please clear the floor for the safety of our teller team. Okay. Good. They want to remain standing. Okay, now let's move into how we will proceed with the balloting. First of all, a reminder of what Dan Dick also told us this morning. You are deciding if you wish or do not wish to endorse the petition as it is written in the materials or on the screen in your workbook. You are not voting up or down, you're just voting whether you want to endorse that petition so it can move on to general conference consideration. Now, in a minute, the teller team will distribute the ballots to members with voting privileges according to the 2012 discipline, and those members that are eligible to vote have green, yellow, or white name tags. If you do not have a name tag of one of those colors, you are not eligible to vote on these petitions. At the center of your tables, I have tried to find room to place pencils. You may have to dig if your table is full. There should be a bundle of pencils located. Please distribute those among those who are able to vote on these petitions. You will need to use the number two pencils to mark your ballots. When you vote on your ballot, you have three choices for each petition. You can vote yes, meaning you want to endorse that particular petition, no if you do not want to endorse it, or you can abstain if you are undecided. We will be using numbers 1 through 13 with the resolution that has been shown on the screen and will be shown again during our balloting time as number 13. 
Our ballots have many numbers. Don't use them all. <laughs> Just use 1 through 13. And the numbers coordinate with the petition numbers that are in your workbook. Please mark each of the little circles that you choose clearly with your pencils. If you make an error, we do have erasers on the other end, so please erase completely before marking again. Once the balloting and voting has been completed, we will ask you to stand again, and the tellers will collect the ballots at that time. And just a word before we distribute the ballots about the results. These results will not be tabulated before the end of our annual conference session this afternoon, but they will be posted on the website and probably in the e-news to direct you to where you can find those results. Do we have any questions about the balloting process before right, we distribute them? Is there any question? Them? Ah, All right, good. you're ready, good. <laughs> I ask the tellers to come forward. They will receive your ballots when they are at the back of the room and in their places. We will ask you to stand at that time, so just relax for a minute. Again, uh, this is a collaborative project. Your prayer, we're going to start uh, voting before voting. We're going to pray together. Tellers, when you are finished distributing the ballots in your areas, if you could bl please bring the extra ballots back to Marianne so we can put them away. Don't need them floating. Okay, if you have a white, green, or yellow name tag on, please stand so you can receive your ballots. Please remain standing until you have received your ballot and then be seated. Remain silence. I think that will be good. Smile at each other, that's fine. Don't vote now. People over there have a pencil. Please don't. Hold it a minute.
when everybody received the ballot, we will do it together. So just to, just to hold a minute. If someone doing voting right now, you are cheating, so don't do that. <laughs> All right. Let us have a moment of prayer together. God of goodness and blessing, guide our conference to search our, your spirit among us. So strengthen our resolve to do only what is good for your kingdom. May all our effort help to intensify your reign, especially this petition that we are voting. Oh God, hear us. Through Jesus Christ do we pray. Amen. Now, vote ready? Vote now. You do all the 13 petition, you do that. When you're done, you just simply stand up. Smile, but not talking. I will ask later the teller to pick it up, the ballot, but now, just to, when you finished it, you stand up so we all see every done, everything is done together. All right, uh, we still, still, yes, just be patient a little bit more.
While a few people are still completing their ballots, if the tellers could move to their places, please. Okay, now teller collected ballot. No, not yet? Okay, waiting, all right. All right, go up collecting that ballot, and when you turn into the teller, then you sit. my Savior, Jesus 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 my Savior, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, beautiful people. You've done very well. That's the whole thing. Mm. You are great. You're great. I'm going to invite John Well, microphone eight. Reverend John Well, why didn't you go to microphone eight? Yes, right there. I know that you are the pastor for Bishop Don Ad and Jen Ad. Yes. So you've been serving such a wonderful way. So you're gonna probably share the memorial service for the Jan at this moment. Thank you, Bishop. Um, Jan Ott, as many of you, uh, a person many of you knew, um, uh, was diagnosed with a form of um, Parkinson's disease not too long ago. The disease progressed fairly quickly and she passed away a couple of weeks ago. The service for her has been planned for Wednesday, June 24th at Community United Methodist Church in Elm Grove. And uh, we're expecting quite a crowd. Uh, Bishop Odd has uh, taken an active part in planning this service and so it will be a reflection of, of his love for his wife and uh, 
and her commitment, her presence in the world. And so if you come, you will hear an expression of, of uh, commitment and love. And, um, and it'll be, I think, a wonderful celebration of Jan Ott's life. And so uh, the church is uh, maybe big in Methodist terms in Wisconsin, but small if you think of it in the world stage. Uh, but if you would like to come, we would ho hope that you would plan to come and be there. There is no visitation prior to the service. Bishop Ott wanted the visitation to be a part of a uh, time of fellowship afterwards. And so the service begins at 11 o'clock. And then there will be a luncheon served afterwards that will be the fellowship time. So if you're coming, that's what you should expect. Mm. And uh, we will gather to celebrate Jan's life. Thank you. You were you're a good pastor to family, and I'm thanked for the on behalf of this conference. All right? Well, this is a great morning that I am privileged to serve you, and I'm going by Rosie Mayorga uh, to the podium and to blessing for the, our lunch break. And she is uh, expecting to be ordained today. You know, she... <laughs> Thank many, you. many colleagues is in a big celebration today in ordination, not only her, but she was a non-Methodist, become a Methodist, a Methodist preacher's uh, wife, and then become a local pastor, church planter, and then started the course of study, college degree, and, and many miles after this. And now she's ordained as a full elder, and for a member of this conference. Yes. What a mile, how many miles has she been Thank you. coming this Thank you. far. So, bless us. Amen. Please, those who are able, rise up. Mm -hmm. Let us pray together. Dios mm bueno, te damos gracias por tu presencia en medio nuestro. Gracias porque hasta aquí nos has traído. Hemos trabajado juntos y juntas y por eso te damos gracias. Gracious God, we thank you because your presence is being among us. We thank you for our bishop, for our spiritual leader. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we have work together as brothers and sisters in Christ and within our own differences, we've been able to work for your glory and the expansion of your kingdom. At this time, O oh Lord, we ask for your blessing upon us as we depart from this place to to take our food. Bless the hands that have worked very hard, even on the fields, and have made them this, this food available for us today. We ask for your blessing upon those who have no food on their table. God, provide through your people and they may be able to see that you are gracious and caring. We pray all of this, and we ask for your blessing. In the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, amen. 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 Blessing for your lunchy fellowship. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>